Hello Performance Ninjas and welcome to the lab assignment about link time optimizations. This will be a fairly short video, but it features one of the most important transformations performed by optimizing compilers, so with no doubt you will enjoy this video. When you have a program that consists of multiple source files, traditionally you compile each of them separately and then link together, as shown on the screen, right? But notice that all the optimizations are done for each source file individually, right? And then so after you compile the source code, you get an object file as an output with machine code inside it, right? And so no optimizations performed after that stage. Well, and the problem here is that we are missing some optimization opportunities that compiler cannot do just because it doesn't see the entire program. And here is the simple example. Suppose we have a function foo implemented in some source file b.cpp and we call that function from another translation unit called a.cpp, right? And so compiler cannot inline this function foo because it doesn't see the body of that function. This particular problem could have been solved if you would place the callee and the caller function in the same source file. However, that's not what you would typically want to do when you have a big program, right? We want to have a nice and clean separation of the functionality in different uh, translation units. So we need another solution here. By the way, I should mention that the tools that can merge multiple source files into a single translation unit do exist. I put uh, links to two of them into the comments under this video. One of them is called CIL, which stands for C Intermediate Language. And the second one is called CPP Merge. Both of them are open source and are available for free. And okay, while you can merge multiple sources together, there are a few limitations to this approach. Well, first, you are not taking advantage of the parallel builds, right? And second, well, what if you want to compile uh, different sources with different compiler options? But luckily, there is much more elegant solution to the problem. Modern compilers provide this special feature called link time optimization or LTO for short. You can also find it under the name interprocedural optimizations, but it's essentially the same thing. And the idea of LTO is the following. Yes, we still process each source file individually, but we do not compile it down to machine code. Instead, we keep the code in intermediate representation and which allows us to do transformation afterwards. After we have compiled all the source files individually, we bring them all together. And this process is called internalization in compiler's terminology. So we produce this fat bitcode file that has the code of entire program in one module. Right? And remember, this is still an intermediate representation. And so now compiler can see all the functions, all the variables in the program Right? And it can do more transformations that previously were not possible. Like, for example, inlining a body of foo function. LTO is technically a part of a compiler, even though it is initiated by a linker. And now, what linker will do in this case, it will actually go through all the inputs, claim uh, those inputs that have bitcode in them, and will pass them back to the optimizer and will give it a chance to further optimize the generated code. Function inlining is one of the transformations that can be better done with link time optimizations, but it's not the only one, right? So we can also eliminate more of a dead code with LTO. Well, it's because now we can clearly see which functions are not called from anywhere in the program, right? And then we can also do virtualize better. Well, so suppose we have a virtual call, but we know that we instantiate only a single polymorphic instance of our object that calls that virtual function, right? 
So there is no need for a virtual call. We can replace it with a direct call. And then there are also opportunities for doing better alias analysis because when we see a whole program, we can better reason which pointers can theoretically point to which memory location, right? And then there are many other opportunities for doing more uh, sophisticated transformations. And here is how you can enable link time optimizations in major C and C++ compilers. So in Clang, you would use minus FLTO. In Microsoft compiler, you should pass slash uh, GL to the compilation and then slash link time code generation to the linker. In, in ICC, LTO is enabled with minus IPO flag. And of course, there are downsides. Well, because otherwise it will be a default option. And so first, LTO is super memory hungry. You see, when you bring all the bit codes together, you essentially keep the giant amount of code in memory. And so when you compile a large application like Clang itself, you can easily run out of memory. Second, uh, it's not parallel, right? So you remember this last step when you do transformations on, the, on this fat uh, bitcode file? This last step runs in a single thread and it can sometimes take longer than compiling all the source files for your program. And then third, it, it actually does not support incremental linking, meaning that even if you change a single source file in your program, LTO is still required to op re-optimize the entire program, which is not super efficient. To tackle those issues, LLVM compiler has implemented a feature called thin LTO, which solves all the three downsides at the cost of sacrificing a little bit of performance. So with thin LTO, you get much, much faster compile time, but slightly uh, less performance benefit than with full LTO. And so you can enable it in Clang with minus FLTO equals thin. MSVC has similar feature, which can be activated with the flag slash link time code generation column incremental. With thin LTO, compiler augments bit code with a compact summary of the module, right? And then so during the link time optimization step, the analysis is done using this combined summary, right? You don't go and analyze every instruction in every function again, right? And then this summary also includes the index of the function locations. So when you actually decide to do some transformation, you pull only the required modules for that transformation, right? So for example, if you decide to do cross module function in line, you only bring the Coley and the caller module, right? You don't bring all the input files. All right, enough of the theory. Let's take a look at the code of the lab assignment. The code for this lab assignment is taken from AO Bench, which actually prints the nice images and you can take a look at them later. But what's important for us here is that these benchmarks consist of multiple source files, right? And then, so for example, we have uh, hot functions in AO underscore intersect dot CPP source file, like ray sphere intersect, which do call uh, this V dot function, for example, right? <clears throat> and if we take a look at this V dot function, we will see that it is relatively small. And so the overhead of calling this V dot function is actually quite big comparing with the amount of work this function itself is doing. And so this v dot function obviously is a candidate for inlining, which can be enabled once we start using link time optimizations, right? And so uh, let's actually turn this flag on in our CMake file. So this is how you do it. You add minus FLTO flag. Let's check what benefit it gives us in terms of performance. So you see, I haven't yet saved uh, this CMake file. And so uh, on the left will be my, my baseline, right? So, so here is my baseline measurement of 
2500 milliseconds so now i save the cmake file and i run the same uh, code again but now using link time optimizations and so we see that the runtime decreased by roughly uh, 20 i'm um, sorry 250 milliseconds which is roughly 10 percent improvement and that's it for today see you in the next lab assignment take care